just pray that you do that this morning with us, Lord. Touch us in a way that you haven't before. Open our ears this morning to the word that's to come, but also through this worship time, Lord. I just pray that you touch each of us in a different way this morning, Lord. So we don't leave the same person. We don't leave the same person.
God inhabits the praises of His people. God inhabits the praises of His people. And I've got to tell you, church, as soon as we started to praise this morning, the presence of God filled this house. He is here. I just get this sense in the midst of all that's going on, God is just waiting. Can someone praise me? Can someone lift up a shout of praise? Where are the people that will praise my name? He is looking for a people that will praise Him during adversity, that will sing a song during trouble, that will declare that God is greater, God is higher. God is more powerful than all that afflicts us and the troubles that surround us. So I wanna congratulate you this morning because you already have taken a position of victory by choosing to come to church, to praise God in the midst of the world spinning around, going a bit wild. You have taken a position of victory this morning and God is drawing close, amen. Amen, so good. I can see all sorts of new people this morning. Happy birthday, Mariah. Happy 17th, gorgeous girl. So good to have you here. Welcome, Rosie, where are you? I saw you walk in. Welcome, beautiful. So good to have you here. Amazing, so good. Um, church, I just wanna pray. Uh, now, let's just join together and let's pray. And a big welcome to everyone online. You are with us. We are praising together. We are praying together. So come on, let's join together and pray. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we thank You, Lord, that You are the God of all hope, that Your power is present. God, that You draw near to us when we draw near to You, Father that Your Spirit is so close to us that it's permeating all that we do and all that we are. I thank You, Father, that Your Spirit is moving throughout our city. God, I thank You that greater is Christ in us than He that is in the world. I thank You, Lord, that Jesus is the Name above every other name. God, You are the Name above coronavirus. We declare it over our city. Come on, church, let's declare it. Jesus, You are the Name above every sickness, above every affliction. We plead the blood of Jesus through the streets of this city. God, we declare that in this city there will be an end to this virus. We will see it eradicated in Jesus' mighty Name. God, I thank You that You're bringing power to Your people, that You're strengthening us. God, in our fear and in our weakness, that You're coming with strength and with courage and with power. I thank You, Father, that You take us from a place of timidity to a place of boldness and courage. I thank You, Father, that You teach us to fear not, but in all things to thank You and to praise You. I thank You this morning that Your power is falling upon our church. I thank You that You lift our spirits, that the God of hope, of all hope, would bring comfort to us. In Jesus' mighty Name, Amen. Amen. So good, so good. You just got to praise it out and pray it out, church. I'm telling you, when it gets hotter out there, we get hotter on the inside. Our praise gets louder, our prayer gets more passionate. Hey, it's so good to see you. For those who don't know me, I'm Kiralee. I'm the senior pastor here together with my husband, Tim. And Tim is away preaching for friends of ours in Wollongong this weekend at C3 Believe. So he sends his love and his greetings. I just wanna do a little bit of housekeeping because I can see we've got kind of a full house in this season, which is wonderful. Um, but I just wanna actually see if there's any youth here. Um, Mariah, our youth are already out the back in the youth room. So if I could encourage any youth here to go out through the back doors of the church and walk round the side into the youth room, our youth are meeting and gathering. If we've got any families here, our kids church is already gathered just across the laneway and our hosts can take you over there if you're wanting to check your children in. 
Okay, good. Are we good? How are we going? Has everyone got seats? Our musos might end up sitting on the stage today. It's like an old school revival meeting, people. The musos are on the stage. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. We're in for a treat this morning. We've got Pastor Ryan Waters all the way. Oh yeah, you can give him a hand. Ryan and Rachel are kind of like family, um, but they are the senior pastors of Selah Church in Mumbai, India. So they are leading their church online at the moment because the whole of India is in lockdown. So we're gonna pray with them. We'll do that when Ryan comes up to preach. But yeah, he's gonna preach for us today, continuing our series on relationships, real relationships. Um, Before you sit down, I do wanna welcome those of you who are new to C3 City today. If there's anyone first time here in our church, could you just slip up your hands so we could welcome you? Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Wonderful, so great to have you with us. We just have a little bit of information about our church. Do we have our welcome bags, Nath, or are we like no welcome bags? We have hello cards. We'd love to meet you and know who you are. So after the service, if you want us to keep in touch, just fill out our information cards up the back and we'll keep in touch with everything that's going on around here. All right, you may be seated, you may be seated. So good, amazing worship team. You're fantastic. Very handsome drummer in the house this morning. Well done. (laughs) That's my son. Um, (laughs) Okay, so good. Um, Just a couple of things happening in the life of the church. There's always actually a lot going on in church, not just on Sundays, but during the weeks. We have our connect groups. We have our cares ministry happening throughout the week. There's so much going on. Um, But today, after this service, we are kicking off our Next Steps course, which is our basic four-step program, which explains to you the pillars of what we believe here. If you're thinking, oh, what is that? Well, it's on the wall. Okay, so the four pillars here at C3 City and actually in Christendom in general, we don't really have our own version, it's all Bible-based, is um, learning what it is to believe in God, to really believe in Jesus Christ, what faith is. We'll be teaching that today at midday in our ministry centre. Pastor Nathan Cox and Di Lee will be teaching on that subject today, explaining what salvation is. How do we come into salvation? What does it really mean to be saved and to be a child of God? Uh, our next pillar is next Sunday, which is belonging in community and in the house of God. Pillar three is becoming, which is about being a disciple, what it is to be a disciple disciple of Jesus, for Him to mould us and shape us into His image. And pillar four is building, which is really about purpose, serving God, going out, being part of the answer, not part of the problem, right? So that's our Next Steps program. If you've never done that, we want to extend a warm welcome. You can join us today. We provide lunch. Actually, Nathan, what time will it start? Because we've had some adjustments with our timing here. Okay, so more like maybe 11.30 this week, 11.30 over in our ministry centre. Wonderful, so good. Um, We've also got, okay, next Saturday, do I have any creatives in the house? Rosie, yeah, we've got some creatives in the house. Well, God is a creative God. In fact, you know, God's answer to darkness was to create. He actually created in answer to darkness. And I just wonder if God is calling more of us than perhaps we realise to create in the midst of the darkness that's afflicting our planet. And so we're hosting a one day, day of immersion here for creatives. Uh, All of our worship and production team will be involved, but it's not just for our worship and production team. I don't know if you have that screen up there guys for that day. No? Okay, all good. Um, It's not just for our worship and production team. This is for all creatives or people who have an interest in creativity. I'm a poet. For those of you who 
don't know. <laughs> so I'll be there um, and a rider. And so we want to extend that. Uh, for people serving on team here, the day is free. It's from 10 a.m. to 3 o'clock. But if you'd like to come as a guest, it is $30, which basically covers your lunch. So it's a pretty good deal. We're going to be covering the creatives in a world, uh, being a vessel of honour for God self-regulating, how to regulate our wild creative heart um, and a lot of topics which are helpful in our inner world. We're going to talk about expression, creative expression and communication. We'll be doing some practical exercises um, in creativity and we'll be closing from two to three with worship and the prophetic. So register online on our website for that event. Um, also, some of you would know that we were planning a women's conference in September. Uh, because of the volatile situation with restrictions at the moment um, and COVID, we have turned that into an online event. We actually couldn't get our speaker here because of border closures. So we've turned that into an online event running every Thursday evening in September. Uh, I'll be hosting that, but we'll be having in a number of speakers. So we'll be in touch with who's coming in for that. We're going to be kicking off uh, with a session titled Back to the Garden, which is about accessing intimacy in a climate of war. Because you know we live in both realms, right? We live in a crazy world, but we have to learn how to be in the garden and be intimate with God at the same time. Then we'll be having a session on Are You OK Day about mental health through spiritual disciplines and other sessions on what God is doing in this season, prophetic sessions, and it's gonna be amazing. So that'll be all free on Zoom. We'll be in touch with more details. So that's what's coming up in the life of the church, but I'd now like to introduce you to Stephen Morgan, who is going to encourage us in our giving with Asher, baby Asher. <laughs> Come on, cheer up the church with baby Asher. Hey church, good to see you. This is my son, if you don't know him, his name's Asher, bringer of hope, uh, joy. And I just wanted to bring him up here this morning, one, to get your interest and your attention, because I know you're gonna now be listening to what I'm saying, but there's something special about a relationship between a son and a father, and it's a picture of the relationship of our Father in heaven and the relationship that He has with each and every one of us, whether you're a son or a daughter, you do have a Father in heaven who loves you, who wants the best for you, and who uh, wants absolutely everything for you. And you can see with Asher, he's 100% reliant on me. Like he can't do anything himself. And it's a, a beautiful picture of our relationship with our Father in heaven. So you might say, what does that have to do with offering? Good question. Glad that you asked it. The thing is, when we come around our time of offering, we need to have it through a lens that there is a Father who loves us and wants the best for us. And we need to be 100% reliant on Him. You know, when we talk about our tithe and our offering, it's not about just giving 10%. It's about aligning our hearts and giving our Father everything. It's about coming under that place where we are 100% reliant on Him for every need that we have. It's not just about money, it's about a way of life. You know, it can become a routine, giving, and it's great that you have got options now where you can give online, you can set up direct debits, so that it just comes in, goes out without you even thinking about it. But this morning, let's take some time to reflect on who our Father is and what He's calling us to give, and then let's make our offering an outpouring from that. The verse that I had uh, that came to me when I thought about offering this morning, it's Galatians 6, verse 9 to 10. And it's been something that's been on my heart quite a while. I think I've even spoken about it in an offering message at the very start of this whole COVID season. And says, don't allow yourselves to be weary or disheartened in planting good seeds. For the season of reaping the wonderful harvest you've planted is coming. Take advantage of every opportunity to be a blessing to others, especially to our brothers and sisters in the family of faith. You know, as we give, we need to not be weary of giving. Like, it, we, it's something that we need to do consistently, but it can get something that uh, it just gets tiring. Or you hear someone up the front talking about offering and you switch off because you've heard it many times before. You know, the dollars that we give 
are people's lives being transformed. There's a Father in heaven that longs to have a relationship with each and every person in this room, but also in the city of Sydney and around the world. And as we give the dollars, it's transforming lives. You know, there's a baby out there, just like Asher, that Christ wants to have a relationship with. They might not be physically a baby, but there's that relationship. There's a father who loves them and wants to know them. Well, he, want, he knows them. He wants them to know him. And so church, as we give this morning, let's just reflect that we do have a father who loves us, and wants the best for us, who has a good plan for us. And what's our response to that? As we give, let's position ourselves to come under that. Let's position ourselves to give everything that we have as we give our tithes, as we give our money, but also as we position our lives to respond to a Father who loves us and wants the best for us. So let me pray as we give. There are ways on how to give on the screen. You can do that online. Uh, You can do that via push pay. Uh, And also there's a bucket up the back at the end of the service. So Father, I just thank you that you love us. Thank you that you know us intimately. Thank you that you have a good plan and a good purpose for us. I just pray that we align ourselves under that. Help us to become 100% reliant on you for everything that we have. As we give our money, as we give our time, thank you that you use that to transform people's lives. Thank you that there is a harvest out there of people's souls, people who need to come to know you. And I just thank you that you're taking this money and you're transforming people's eternal destinies. We thank you, Father. We love you. We give everything that we have to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we give, let's uh, cast our eyes to the screen and we're gonna hear an incredible story, a testimony of how this church and Vision Builders has changed a couple's life. My name is Louise and I've been coming to this church since 2003. And my name is Michael and I've been coming to this church since 2005 and uh, generally we, we serve mainly in kids church. We also run a connect group and I do a little bit, bit of work with the board. I love C3 City because this is the church that I've grown in, in God, I've really found God. Well I've found through this season C3 has been so important because uh, through this season there has been a lot of connection. Yes. There has been a lot more connection during this season than we've actually seen before. And uh, we've gone to weekly connect and that level of connection that has grown through this period I think has brought people a lot closer together. And through that we've all been encouraged. At the start of the COVID season Uh, when there was the most uncertainty there was. I was going to start a trial that was going to run for about four months. And right at the start of the season, the judge said that trial will not go ahead. So that at that point in time, I had no work booked for the next four months because of the closure down of that trial. First thing we did when when that occurred was to uh, fulfill our Vision Builders commitment for the year. God has been the provider for us for 20 odd years in my sole practice and a little bit of a virus is not going to stop God being our provider. I have found that through this period, there's been an opening up and a lot more advice work whilst courts have been closed. So God has continued to be our provider through this period. We really feel that we've had such extraordinary growth um, by being planted in this church during this time and leaning into all of the things that the church has made available to us. The Thursday morning prayer meetings, the weekly connect, pastors coming um, on to our weekly meetings and just speaking such wisdom into, um, into our lives for this season to strengthen us. Vision Builders is really about putting a, a line, a, a stake in the ground right now mm. for the future generations that will come through this church and bring God's kingdom forward for those future generations. I would encourage people to give because love gives as we give. It places us into this place of dependence with God and that's a place of great growth. So as we step out, the loving hand of our Father and His assurance comes upon us and we walk it out in greater trust and a greater level of obedience with with Him and that's the place where growth is for each of us. Let's just stand again and join in. Sing out to Heavenly Father this morning.
believes that church? Who believes that we have a God of revival? I do. I do. I believe some of the greatest miracles that will happen on planet Earth we are yet to see. I believe in an outpouring of the Spirit of God. I believe we're going to see signs and wonders right here in Darlinghurst because we have a God of revival. Amazing. Well, church, I'd like you to stay standing while I introduce Pastor Ryan and Rachel Waters. Why don't you both come? So good, so good. Rach, you just wanna grab that yellow mic for a minute. So as I mentioned, Rachel and Ryan are the senior pastors of Sailor Church in Mumbai, India. Now that whole nation is in lockdown and has been for many months. So I know you and I are frustrated about different things with Corona and da 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 da, -da. but right now, we're gonna think about a whole body of people that's in a way worse position than we are. And we're gonna to pray together as the body of Christ, as the family of God for our brothers and sisters in another nation. So I thought maybe you guys could just let us know. Rachel and Ryan are over here. Obviously, they are dual citizens, Australia and India, and they had to make their way over here. They've got some issues in um, family in Australia with some health problems and other situations. So they are running their church online uh, from Australia at the moment. But how's the church, guys? Like, how are people feeling in India? Well, right now, as Kirli said, there's a lot going on. But the good news is we've seen the church stronger than ever. Mm -hmm. They've come together, devoting to each other, honoring one another, really loving, mm -hmm. coming together in this time because there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. There's so much of bad news around. We've had floods to add to this. We've had poverty gone to just levels that are unseen of because people aren't allowed to go out and work. And so there's, there's so much going on, but we've seen with Sela in this time, the church really coming together, standing together, and knowing that Christ is the hope for the world. Yeah. So we really wanna ask you to pray that God continues to encourage mm. the church as they battle on so many fronts. The monsoon has hit and there's floods everywhere. There was a plane crash last week, 17 people died, and it's all happening at once. The numbers are going up in thousands daily. Um, so could you join with us yeah. and pray as we stand together and intercede for the great nation of India? Yeah, praise God. It's awesome. Let's pray, church. Come on, let's join together and let's pray for thank these you, guys, Lord. their city and their nation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for Ryan and Rachel. Thank God, for their strength of leadership during this time to gather a whole community of people from their homes online yes, to inject faith, hope and love. God, I thank you that you anoint them in greater measure, Lord. In greater measure, God, even as they're in Australia, that their anointing for the nation of India increases, God that they could gather many in their Thank homes, you, Father, to build a resilient people, God, Bless to build a church, yes, Father God, God, that will come through this in strength you, and in victory. God, I thank you, Praise Lord, that your Jesus. church advances in a climate of war. Yeah. And we declare Amen. that, Lord, yes. over yes. Selah yes. Church yes. and over yes. India. God, I thank you that you are the God of all comfort. Yes. And I thank you, Lord, that you comfort your people, yes, that you bring strength, hope, courage and a vision Amen. of a new day Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Awesome. God. Great. So, Ryan, oh gosh, that's, that's I'm closing Bible. up your Bible. You might need that. I think you're preaching the Word of God. I'm that's it, that's it. Okay, okay, there it is. Good. <laughs> just testing you, just no, seeing if you can find your Scriptures. Yeah, I, I'm still learning how to find the books. <laughs> I'm going to hand over to you, my friend. Church, why don't you welcome Ryan as he brings the word this Praise morning. God. Thank you, Kira Lee. Well, so wonderful to be here. You can, you can be seated. You guys are awesome. I just, I just want to say um, this is just such a great church, and it's led by such great people, Tim and Kira Lee, amazing friends of ours. And... Uh, and also uh, Jeff and Wendy who have just hosted us this, this time while we've been here in this weird 
um, season of our life, they have made it completely unweird. They've made us feel at home. And uh, we're just so grateful t to them and everybody else who's helped us out. We thank you so much, the Jones family and everybody else, man. What an incredible church. Come on, give yourselves a big clap. You're an amazing <laughs> church. I'm telling you, if you're new here, if you're new here, get to know the people here. They're gold, they're gold. It's an amazing church in the heart of this city. And uh, we're talking about real relationships. Who knows that we need real relationships. There's enough of uh, fake relationships, right? And uh, if you've done life out in the corporate world for a little while, if you've done life in the city for a little while, you can sometimes find out that things can be a bit shallow. Um, and uh, the church is actually meant to be a place where things go deep and go real. Um, and we're going to be talking about that today. Thanks to all the volunteers that are I see all the guys up on the screens up there. You guys are awesome. Yeah. And the sound guys, camera guys putting this up online. Hi, if you're online, just welcome. I'm so glad you're on with us today. And uh, Musos, man, what a stellar job you guys did. Uh, awesome stuff. Even though you have no seats to sit in, you are still doing your thing, doing your thing. <laughs> I don't know where you're gonna sit, but anyway, praise God. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you're, if you wanna stay, you can stay. I'm happy, I'm happy with whatever you do. I like music happening in the background. Okay, let's read from um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. The title of this sermon today is From the Heart. From the Heart, okay? Let me read this scripture to you and then I'll explain what I mean by that title. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have Sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. Love one another deeply from the heart. Who likes to read these scriptures? Who likes to read scripture? Hands up, you like scripture. Who likes applying it to their lives? I'm like, not always, right? Because especially when I read something like this, because I'm like, well, I'd prefer to love people deeply from the surface. <laughs> and if they earn the right to be loved from my heart, then I might love them from the heart. But that's, you know, depending on their behavior and what they do and how they treat me in return. Uh, so it, 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 it generally goes from the heart to the head, depending on what they do and whether or not they deserve my heart love. Who knows what I'm talking about? Because, you know, it's to love from the heart puts you in a vulnerable position. Much easier to love from a distance and love from the head, kind of to love intellectually, but to put walls up around the heart. Because whenever you love from the heart, it's like you open the door for people to hurt you. Who knows what I'm talking about? Who's been hurt by someone you love? We all have, right? Remember that old song, First Cut is the Deepest? <laughs> First Cut is the Deepest. I'm in old school mode today because we started the morning off with Jeff and Wendy with some, uh, with some amazing Keith Green. Who knows Keith Green? Yeah. Purify my heart. It was so good. Keith Green, if you don't know who Keith Green is, you're not saved yet. You're, you're... <laughs> anyway, I digress. I digress. It's easy to love from the surface. It's easy to masquerade love. It's easy to say, I'm in love. The sad thing about today and um, maybe the challenges facing some of the younger uh, single people uh, today, uh, holler back if you're single in the house, it's all good, you can advertise. Any, any single people in the house? You know what they say, it pays to advertise. You gotta let people know. Otherwise, I think you're taken. All right. The sad, the sad, thing, the sad thing for facing you guys today is, I mean, I'm, um, I'm 43, so when I was on the market, not anymore, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very taken uh, by my beautiful wife. 
When I, when, when I was back on, you know, the market, I didn't have this Tinder and Bumble and all of these sorts of things. And I've had to, you know, had, I've had conversations with single people who were on these things. And it just seems like these days what one can do is almost like stream this feeling of love. Like it's streaming love and you can just swipe to side. I like this person, I like this person. You can go out on multiple dates and nothing wrong with dating and getting to know people, but... What I've noticed, one of the behaviors that's happening is this is people are going from more and more relationship, relationship, and never really putting down the roots and loving deeply from the heart. And who knows that that is not going to work out. This just, it, eventually, as time goes on, you kind of realize, hey, I'm really alone because I haven't gone from the heart. But it, it's, and it's, it's much easier to love from the surface because the head mixes up the heart. When someone hurts you, when someone you love and you've opened up your heart to them, do something and it causes you to be jealous or it causes you to be hurt or it, you, you get offended, you get rejected or they, they cause some sort of fear to rise up in your heart or your expectations aren't met, your heart begins to become influenced by your head and who's thought those thoughts when you're jealous? Who's, who knows? Come on, let's be real here. There's always a real relationships. Yeah, who's felt those jealous feelings like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And even though I love them from the heart, Kira Lee has. She's the only honest one in the house. <laughs> Pastor Kira Lee. She's leading in vulnerability here. <laughs> Praise God. That's what we're supposed to do as pastors. Who knows that our heart corrupts, sorry, our head corrupts our heart. And then once our heart gets corrupted, it begins to fool our heads. And loving with someone from the heart becomes this thing. It's like, well, I'm just going to protect myself. And the unfortunate thing in church life is this happens all the time. Church, you've come today amazingly in faith is as much as the person that is next to you and the person that is next to them. Look at the people around you. The church is actually more about the people sitting next to you and the relationship, the true deep relationships that you have with them than about the pastor on the altar preaching. There is a place, of course, for the pastor on the altar preaching. But a sad thing that happens in church life is we forget the Bible. It becomes all about just coming to church on Sunday, saying hi to everybody, hi, hi, pretending. See, back in Mumbai, what's happened for us as a church is we've lost the Sunday service. We come online, but it's not the same. It's, we're not able to, to say hello. But what it's done is it's caused everybody to reassess their relationships and go, do we actually have true relationships with the people in our church? Right? And it's forced them to, to, to stand in the gap for one another, to force them to go, okay, I'm going to be devoted to my church brothers and sisters and love deeply from the heart. And that's a challenge. Who's been hurt by someone in church before? Come on, let's be honest. We all have. If we've been around, listen, if you're new around here, you're going to get hurt by the people in this room, maybe. I'm not being negative. It's just the truth. You know, it's, it's great when you uh, first come into uh, a church or when you first come into a group of people, you, it's all, you all love each other, right? And after a while, it's like Lord of the Flies. After a while, you begin to hate each other. <laughs> That's when we need the grace of God. That's where we need God to be at work in our hearts, and that's what I'm preaching about. How do we love with a pure heart? That's, a, that's the tension I'm trying to build into your mind right now. How do we actually love from the heart when it actually, when, it, when you truly think about it, it's actually really hard? Yeah. Well, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, and I'm going to read from the New King James here because um, the New King James puts it a little better. Um, it says this, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope 
fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. There's a few things. Firstly, you probably, did, probably didn't realize that your mind had loins. That's why in other, in other uh, versions they've left this out. But the original language that they were using, the context um, that the writer was trying to put into the mind of its reader was um, that of a man once upon a time when this was written would wear a robe, okay? they wear a robe. And uh, now we call them um, dresses, okay? So now we wear pants, men generally, don't we? Okay? In India, um, in the South, I don't know if we've got any South Indians, we would know what a lungi is. Who knows what a lungi, hands up if you know what a lungi is. Anybody know what a lungi, Rachel does. Okay, we've got one, two hands. Okay, a lungi is basically um, a piece of cloth that a, that a man wears, and it's like a big skirt, but it's a man's skirt, okay? So, I don't know, if you wanna come to church in your lungi next week, guys, it's okay. In India, they, they do this, right? But the problem is, is um, if, a, Back then, if a man needed to go for a run, like say if he's got a little baby and he needs to run after that baby or if he needs to get somewhere quickly, uh, he couldn't run because the lungi or the, the robe would get all caught up. So what he would do, okay, and uh, you, can, you can do this when you wear a lungi, okay, he would grab, he would grab the, uh, the robe in between his legs, he'd pull it up between his legs like this, pull it up, and he would wrap the fabric, like roll it up, and put it around his waist and tuck it in. That's called girding up your loins. And then he'd be able to run. Puts a funny picture in your head, it'd look like he's wearing a nappy, but we're not gonna go there. It was the olden days, so they got away with it, right? So, but this is, how, this, is, this is the picture that the author is trying to put into the minds of the reader. One of, okay, get ready for moments where you're going to have to pull up the slack and tuck it in and control your mind. That's what he's saying. There's going to be moments, it's a given, listen to me, it's a given. When you want to really love people from the heart, there's going to be moments where you are going to have to go to God's word and go, what am I supposed to be thinking here? What, how am I supposed to be acting here? How am I supposed to be treating? Because if you don't, who knows what happens? If you don't gird up the loins of your mind, you're gonna say stuff that you never wished you would ever say or you wish you never would say and you're gonna have arguments and you have fights and you're gonna have regrets. So who knows what it's like when you don't gird up the loins of your mind in relationships? So the author is saying, okay, guys, you're gonna have to make a choice here. You need to be ready. Gird up the loins of your mind. And then he says this, be sober. Okay, be sober. Don't be angry. Be sober. That's a choice. We have to relax. We have to pull back. Be sober. And then here's the key. And rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What does, that mean? what does that mean? Okay, first we gird up our mind. Secondly, we have to rest in the hope of the revelation of Jesus Christ. At the revelation of Jesus Christ, I'm just gonna explain what the author means here. You begin to realize how much you're worth. The reason why you begin to realize how much you're worth is because the gospel tells us that Christ, God, gave up his life. He left the riches of heaven so that we could have life in him. He came and sacrificed his own life for our sins so that we could have, be joined in life with him and have eternal life with him and even have him walking with us in this life right now. Now, I mean, if I was to tell you, and you didn't know the gospel, God loves me so much that he just gave his life up for me. And if someone hadn't heard the gospel, they would say, well, God must really, really, really like you if he gives up his life for you. 
Some of us, I don't know, we need to understand how much you are valued in the eyes of God. So much so that he gave his life for you. He loves you so, so much. Now, when we begin to realize our value in God, when people let us down, the people we love, the people we put our hope in, let us down, but we know how much we are valued in God, and that is a never, that's never changing. What we begin to do is we go, okay, I'm just gonna put my hope and rest in God, even when people let me down. I'm gonna rest in God, rest in the fact that he gave his life for me. He still loves me. He still loves you. I don't know, maybe one of you or some of you guys have had a rough week where you know you've been away from God, where you know you've made some choices. When you came this morning, you're like, God, I'm getting to church. and <laughs> He loves you. It's all proven on the cross. He loves you. Someone needs to hear this. He loves you so much. And maybe your life up until now has been all about your performance and what you can do to please God. Listen, it's not about your performance. It's about the performance of Christ on the cross on your behalf because he loves you. Now, you can rest in that. No matter what argument you have, no matter what happens to you, no matter who says what to you, in all of your relationships, there's a place waiting for you called rest. We called our church sailor. It means to pause. Sometimes we just need to pause and rest in God. When you know that you have this place of rest and when you know that you can put your hope in Christ, when people let you down, it's okay. See, the problem is, is we often put our hope in people. They let us down. We get hurt, damaged, and jaded. And when it's, when it's parents, when it's children, when it's our wives, our spouses, when it's the people that we love the most that let us down, and we've put all of our hope in them, we go, oh, well, what do I do now? I'm so hurt. Listen, the only one that we can truly put our hope in is Christ. People will let you down. I'm not saying that people are hopeless, <laughs> but I am saying that you will be let down. And the only one that truly knows your heart is Christ. Rest your hope. See, when you begin to get a revelation of the love of God, that's why I've been talking about his love. When you begin to get a revelation of this love, you begin to realize I can rest there. That's my resting place. Oh, and, and there's a full assurance. I mean, just listen to this scripture in 18, um, verse 18 to 21 of chapter one of Peter. It says, for you know that it was not with perishable things that such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ. You were purchased with a price. Okay, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Though you, uh, through him, you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Your faith and hope are in people. Is that what it says? Your faith and hope are in God. Your faith and hope are in God. This is how you can really, truly love from the heart because your heart will be protected by the fact that your faith and hope are in God so that when people let you down, and they will, you're okay. Hmm? We love people but we put our hope in God. I just wanna say that again. We love people, it's what we're called to do. Greatest commandment is to love one another, or love God and then love one another as we love ourselves, right? We love people, but we put our hope in God. This is how you love people. Because when love goes out without expectation, 
you just love. I love what C3 City does with the outreach of the C3 Cares. I mean, yeah. goodness me, I was in the office a couple of days this week and um, Rachel dropped me off one morning and there's this line down the street of people and just this food and clothes and I was like, wow, that's so cool, man. Just giving without expectation, that's love. That's truly loving the city. Commendable, church, you guys are awesome. Commendable. And the only way you can love without expectation is to know that there is a source for you and your heart that is never ending, that is always there so that when your hope drops, listen, some of you single guys, you've, or single women, single guys, I, I just wanna speak to you, I, I got a heart for you guys. Listen. I know you've put your heart out there and as time goes on, <laughs> you like wish that someone would see you for who you are and give their lives to you. The only one that truly sees you is Christ. People will let you down. And I don't know what your future is, but I know one thing. The love of Christ for you is so much. He gave his life for you. Yeah. And maybe you just need to meditate on that and relax. Rest, just rest, stop striving. I have to tell myself to stop striving. Gird up the loins of your mind because your mind will go all over the place. Now gird it up, don't let it control you. Be controlled by the word of God. Submit to the word of God because I'm telling you something that never changes and it is what you can build your life upon, amen. How are you going, you all good? Praise God. Ah. Oh. Okay, let me read this to you. 1 Peter chapter 23 to 25. I hope the screens, guy are keep, screens guys are keeping up me. I'm gone a bit all over, all over the place, but they're, they're smart. They're, they're gonna get this. 1 Peter 23 to 25. It says this, for you have been born again, not a perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For, listen to this, okay? All people are like grass. Isn't this nice? Oh, this is how you see me, God, okay. You're like grass. All people are like grass. And all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Now, the point I'm making here is that we need to be aware as to what we are living by or what seeds we are allowing to be planted in our minds and our hearts. There's, there's, there's a seed here where it's talking about the perishable seed versus the imperishable seed. The perishable seed is everything that is perishable. This whole life that we're living is completely perishable. And one of, the, one of the crazy things that we've seen in India and probably in Australia as well is with COVID-19, whether rich or poor, if that, if that virus touches you, doesn't matter how much money you got in the bank, and we've seen this in India where there's been extremely wealthy people who have somehow caught this virus and realized that their life is so perishable and yet everything they've ever worshipped is money, perishable, right? And here's, here's the thing in our relationships. Everything that's ever happened to you, and maybe you guys, I don't know, have had some pretty average things happen to you as you've been growing up. Maybe some of you have had some people really hurt you. Maybe you've had fathers who weren't there. Maybe you've had mothers who walked out. Maybe, maybe you've had that partner that you hoped that they would just stick with you and they didn't and they went and did something else. Maybe. Maybe you've had that boss who just keeps overlooking you no matter how much you perform and they, they, they went and put someone in front of you at work and you wished that that was you and your increment never went up. Maybe you've been overlooked. Listen to me, it's all perishable. 
It's all perishable. But here's the deal. We as human beings, we build mental artifacts in our mind, mental artifacts in our mind of the things that have been done for us and they become solid artifacts. That's what we do as humans, right? We build artifacts. We build things. And what we do in our minds is we build these artifacts and they almost become altars and define us as people because that person's done this and this person's done that and it comes in church life as well. Well, she hurt me and she said this and they talk behind my back and all of a sudden we've got this sort of division and social distancing has been happening for a long time in church, way before COVID-19, because we build mental artifacts based on what people have done to us. Listen to me, you've got to hear me. It's all perishable. It's all passing away. I want to ask you something. What are you building your life on? Who is it that said that to you, that you believe about yourself every time something goes wrong? It's perishable. Every time you come up against trouble. Every time you come up against pain, so often, who knows what I'm talking about, there's something that someone said and it resonates. It's a mental artifact that we need to break down in our lives. You need to be careful to plant the right seed in your world. It's the Word of God that endures forever. It's the Word of God that endures forever. I want to ask you this morning, and maybe there's a moment right now where you're challenged by what I'm saying. Maybe there's some mental artifacts, stuff that you've been carrying. People whom you put your hope in who let you down. People whom you thought should see you maybe should open a door for you, maybe should help you, maybe should be there for you, and they weren't. Maybe you've built a mental artifact in your mind, now I will never again be hurt by anyone, so therefore, poof, the wall's going down. And I protect myself because your hope was deferred Proverbs says, hope deferred makes a heart grow sick. Listen, maybe there's some sick hearts here this morning. When it comes to relationships, you are protecting yourself because why? You've been hurt. And I understand, I get it. But there is a promise. The imperishable word of God that's there for you this morning, right now, to heal your heart Begin to put your hope in Christ. That way you'll find you can love for real. You can put your love out and expect nothing back, just like Christ. He put his love out for you, he put himself on the cross, expected nothing back from you. He just did it in the hope that you would give your life back to him. The only way you can truly love is to know this love. And uh, I just want to invite any one of you, if this is ministering to your heart, just close your eyes. It's you and God right now. And open your heart to Him. Holy Spirit, we invite you here. Heal broken hearts, Lord God. The wounds of fathers to sons, we break in Jesus' name. The wounds of mothers who told their daughters the wrong thing, we break that in Jesus' name. The wounds of single people who had that one partner who they thought was gonna 
be there and it ended up being a complete lie. We break it in Jesus' name. And Father, we gird up our minds. Give us the strength right now to gird up the loins of our minds and begin to live by your word, the imperishable word of God that never changes. We put our hope, we rest in you, Lord God. We rest in you. We rest in you, oh God. Lord, we repent right now. Maybe some of us need to just repent. We turn to you, Lord, where we've looked to others. But really, we should have been looking at you, God. We've tried to put our hope in people. They've let us down. and We've gotten hurt. Lord, we release these things to you. We forgive, Lord God. Sometimes forgiveness, you know, it's like in the soil of our heart, the seeds that we plant of bitterness, the only way that we can pull those weeds up is to forgive. Forgive. Just, I, I just feel like there's some people right here that need to let go of some things and just forgive. And even if you're in a place where I can't forgive, just say it, I forgive them. Give me strength, God, to forgive them. Give me strength, Lord, to forgive them. Empower me, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray for that person who is struggling with forgiveness right now, that you speak into their heart and release them from the sin of bitterness in Jesus' name and unforgiveness that that mental artifact would be broken in Jesus' name. Lord, let us experience your love in this moment. I welcome you here, Holy Spirit. Let's just lift our hands to heaven. He's here. The Holy Spirit's here. He's here, oh Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Just release some things. There's some release. I can just almost see a picture of just people just releasing things up to heaven right now. Release that memory. Release what was said. Release that brokenness. It came from a perishable seed. It's passing away. Don't live your life by perishable seed, but by the imperishable Word of God in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, we come to you, Lord. We glorify your name. We thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, minister to us, oh God. Oh God, the brokenness of people, we release it right now. You are the unchanging one, oh Lord. The only one we can live by. Come to you, Lord. Come to you, Lord. I just feel like if this is really, really, really speaking to you, just as an act of victory, that this is no longer going to mark me. I just want you to stand up and go, okay. And as you stand up, I want you to stand into victory in Christ over these things that have been said, these things that have been done, that have been affecting you. Just stand up where you are. God's going to do something. I'm telling you something. Oh, presence of God, fall, Holy Spirit. We stand in to the cross. We stand in to what you've given us, Lord God. The freedom from the sins of others, Lord God, freedom. Lord, let this church be a church that is real, that's authentic as we hope in you in Jesus' name and love others. Yes, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We glorify your name.
let's sing out to the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. You're set free in Jesus' name. Yes, God, and we worship you, Lord. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Stephen T. Steve, where are you, buddy? Where are you, mate? I, he's up there. Can you hear me, Steve-o? Your bubs, you're an absolute champion, mate. I just want to say this to you, and I've got one more thing to do before we close, but Steve, I just wanted to, as you were giving your offering, oh, he's coming down, okay. Thanks for coming down, mate. I, sorry to put you on the spot, but. Steve, I just, just wanted to say this. As you were giving your offering, I felt the Lord say that there is a flame in you that's growing. As you've served and you've served and you've, you've put yourself on the altar, you've said, God, whatever. And I feel like God has put a word inside of you that's yours. It's a flame. I just want to encourage you, be in the Word of God, be seeking out God, have a quiet time, every day, no matter what it takes. I, mean, I know that's not always possible, but just begin to cultivate a spiritual life. And out of that, you, there is a ministry that's gonna be birthed out of what you, and who you are, Steve. You have a giant waiting to launch out of you, Steve. And right now it's this little flame. Sometimes you've had little revelations where you're like, wow, that's cool. God, you spoke to me. Let me tell you something. Those revelations aren't just for you. They're to set free churches. They're to set free people. You're going to speak the Word of God over people's lives and a hundred other people would have spoken it over their lives, but they're going to see it because of what's on your life, Steve. So don't doubt yourself. Be praying like a spiritual warrior in Jesus' name. You've got so much to offer. It's, it's early days. But I just, I'm just i saying this to say this. There's going to be moments where that flame, if you're not careful, could get quenched out by the behavior of others. Others, you know, like if you see a fire, sometimes big logs fall on the little coals and it gets quenched. Never get quenched. Secret place with the Lord. And out of that place, He's going to raise you up. In Jesus' name, amen. Be encouraged, my, my man. You're awesome. Praise God. Praise God. The last thing I want to do, if you're here this morning and you're like, man, I, this Jesus, He gave His life for me and how do, I, how do I invite Him into my heart? It's really simple. There's no penance that you have to pay. There's nothing you have to do except believe. Come to Him and accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Accept the fact that you need Him. Accept the fact that you have sinned and that you need His forgiveness. And as you do that and invite Him to be the Lord over your life, He comes in, fills you with the Holy Spirit and you become His. You become His child. You get adopted into His family. If there's anybody this morning that is here that wants to invite Jesus into their heart, would you please do something for me? so that I can know, so that we can pray with you? Could you let me know who you are so that we can pray a prayer together in this moment right now? Is there anybody here that would like to pray a prayer with me of inviting Jesus into their hearts? If that's you, would you just, would you just raise your hand? Just let me know. 
Is there anybody here this morning? It's okay, it's okay. You can do this again and again. It's all good. Is there anybody here that would like to raise their hand? It's a step of boldness. I'm just gonna let it linger for a second. It's a little awkward, I know, but if that's you, okay, we got someone up the back. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Praise God. Great. Good. Can we, church, can we pray together with these ones who have lifted their hands? Just repeat this prayer after me. I, I wish I could get you out the front and pray for you, but I'm not sure if we can do that anymore because of COVID and blah, blah, blah. But let's pray together. Let's pray together, church. Dear Jesus, I invite you into my heart. I accept your forgiveness for all of my sins. I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. I will follow you. Fill me, God, with your spirit. Let me know who you are how to follow your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give these guys a big clap. Let's go. Come on. My God, that is who you are. Yes, Lord. Ryan, thank you so much. It was beautiful, it was tender and it was sacred. And church, I wanna tell you that now is not the time to shrink back. Now is the time to move forward in your faith, to lean into God in a deeper and a greater way, to let those messages cut you to the core and be transformed by them. This is the time, church, to grow, to become more like Jesus, to shine in the darkness. So God bless you, church. I pray you have a phenomenal week and that Word really seeps in deep to all that you are deep into your heart. Remember, for those of you that are joining our next steps, if you could make your way over to our ministry centre across the laneway, Nathan and Di and a yummy lunch will be waiting for you. And you are welcome to join even if you haven't yet registered for that next steps program. Uh, next Saturday, our day of creative immersion. If you'd like to know more about that, you can see our info counter up the back or look online. And we will be back next Sunday, continuing our series on real relationships and Tuesday evening, 6.30 p.m., Hour of Power at our prayer meeting here at church. God bless you, church. Thanks, guys.